All right, so I already ran into my first problem. This is bad. However, I also got bad bushings on the uh, lower control arms. I don't have the money to get lower control arms right now. Uh, one way you can tell bad bushings on lower control arm. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm still getting used to this camera. Zoom in. If you look right there, you can see where they're torn. So this should be attached to here. And if, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but right there. Weep. Sorry. Weep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. If you look right where I pointed at that right corner. Hold on, tighten this up. Sorry for the uh, blurriness. There we go. If you look right here, that's torn. And this side is heavily torn. So, when you do these control arms, in my opinion, because I can get both sides for about 70 bucks, just replace the whole arm, because you're going to have to take it out anyways. Um, my main issue right now, though, is I'm doing the sway bar links. Zoom on out. That bottom one, the whole joint when I spin the uh, nut is turning. Thankfully on this one, on the opposite side, I can stick a wrench in there and hold it. Is this sad I replaced my brakes like a year ago and they're already rusted? And yes, I drive this daily. Yeah, that's going to have to work. It needs a size 18, but the lowest I have is a 19. Well, I got a sense. Let's see. 17 and 19. I had to run next door to borrow these. Nope. Mainly because I don't have any wrenches in my kit. So, what we're going to do. Put this on here like that. Then okay, so it's swinging that way. I do recommend the right size tools for this kind of job. However, this is the only deep I have for, see if I can do this instead. <laughs> However, see how the whole thing's spinning? So yeah. See if I can get that one socket in there now. Main reason I needed deeps is because, sadly, my sockets were just a little too short. And yes, I can now get the small one on there. Derp, derp. Mm. All right. Good news is, it seems my suspension is holding true. So, last time I did this, back when I first got the car about four or five years ago, this whole thing broke. And when I had it on the ground, well, once I got it in the air, this whole assembly was so off alignment, my entire suspension drooped down. 
However, that could have been attributed to uh, bad set of shocks, which, if you look, have been replaced. Um, I had those replaced about two years ago. They're a set of Monroes, and they seem to work pretty good. All right, now let's go ahead and get this last one out. I'm going to turn the camera off and on pause because I don't have any way to show you this without breaking my new camera. However, these uh, bolts are... Where did I put my socket? The bolts are 15 millimeter on this set. And then the little control thing on the back is 18 millimeter. I do recommend you have both ready. Now, if they don't have a little like wrench thing in the back to help you hold it together, another way you can do it is use a Dremel and very, very carefully use a cutting wheel to cut the bolt off. I've done it with tie, the uh, tie rod ends back when I first did those, and it worked pretty good. Uh, the other way, which I, is what I did at the time because I didn't have a Dremel, I took a pair of channel locks, I believe they're called, you know, the ones that once you squeeze them shut, they're shut until you hit a release lever. And, well, because the old one was off, I was able to grip the actual ball joint headpiece and lock it in place with the channel locks and slowly get it off. So, And I just found more rust. That's going to be fun. Anyways, you're probably wondering why I'm doing my best to keep this car. It's my first car, my sister's first car, first car we bought up here in Kentucky. So, I am a sucker for nostalgia. I'll see you all in a bit. Okay. One way you can tell these are bad. That one, while stiff, the boot is completely torn. Same with this one. Its boot's completely torn, but this one... Yeah. Hi, my name is Bob. How you doing? No offense to anyone named Bob. But yeah, this this one's completely gone. Surprisingly, this is a Moog. So, and I got a Moog set, but the set I got is designed completely different. The set I got doesn't have the Zerk fittings on the back. They have them on the side. And they're also slightly thicker than this set of Moog with the thicker... Well, the whole thing's thicker. And, no, that's not, well, that's my what she said, but it's not what she said. But, uh, the Zerk fittings on the new set I got are on the side. Which, in my opinion, is better, because it makes greasing them a world easier. So, this is the driver's side completely off. Uh, go ahead and get the bolts on so I don't lose them. I have to call my sister for my gojo when I'm done with this. Now you're probably wondering why I do this job if you didn't make sure you had all the tools you needed. Honestly, I thought I didn't. I used to have a pair of the, uh, whatever the tool is called, vice grips, channel locks. Um, I just woke up about 10, 15 minutes ago, got started on all this, and I just, I want to get it done. So, yeah, that one is out. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the new one installed. This way the actual swaver that crosses the whole front end doesn't fall or anything else. And thankfully, like I said, the suspension did not droop this time. So I should be able to just pop them in there. Well, I'm not going to torque them down yet, but I'm going to bolt them in. I'll see you all in, well, you'll see me quicker than I see you. Like I said, it'd be instant for you, but I'm back. Here's the new Moog kit uh, for sway bar links on my car. As I said, the Zerk fittings are on the side. Makes it much easier to grease them. And then here's that little bolt, well, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. If you know what it's called, comment down in the comment section below. But, the And that fits it just fine enough to hold it in place. Um, torque specs on these is 38 foot-pounds. I'm going to do my best to torque them. Ain't much room in here. If I had a long enough extension, I could bring my extension way out. But, I mean, the whole thing way out so I can torque it. But, 
Well, I'm using common basic hand tools, as the YouTuber Chris Vick says. You can do just about anything on a car with basic hand tools. So we're going ahead and get the bolts off and slide the whole thing in place. See if I can get you all a uh, shot on the inside. I'm sorry, it's not the best angle. Anyways, now remember, if the suspension droops, you can use two jacks, one to hold the car up, and one to put the suspension in the proper place so your parts are aligned. Um, <clears throat> now, that's not safe. I don't recommend it, but if you have to do it, understand you are accepting the risk. I am not responsible. Um, I will admit I did that. That's how I did the other side when it went out back when we got the car, but I just don't want to see anyone get hurt. You can get a set of jack stands at Walmart for like 20 bucks. It's a lot safer. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this in. So, if you noticed, this has a thread on each side. So, what I do is I slot it in. And I noticed, thankfully, there's enough play in my sway bar. I was able to push down and pop the whole assembly in. Now, we're going to get our bolts somewhere. See, you're there. And the other one is there. Then we're just going to lightly thread them on. Now, if you noticed, they're not spinning as much. Once they go a certain amount on. Oy. So, which is a good thing. It means that it's nice and tight, it's proper size, yada yada yada. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this, put it back here, hold it together, and then slowly just put it on. Now this would be a lot faster for impact tools, which I do have, but they're electric. And I need to use an extension cord in my uh, thing outside, my socket outside for my extension cord. The whole outlet's dead. That's a whole another kettle of fish I'll get into later. Now, you're not supposed to actually torque them down until oh, come on. you have a load on the suspension, which we're going to use the jack for. Anytime you work on suspension parts with bushings or anything, always, oh, yeah. always torque them down after you have a load on your suspension. If you don't, the boots will wear out faster and probably tear. Now, like I said, I'm just doing this enough to get it on. And that's good. Now, it's not torqued down. It is a little loose. Now, we're just going ahead and get the bottom side done. Now, I would also recommend, if you notice down here, I'm not sure if you can see it, my 310 jack stands are on their lowest setting. That's because I have a 2-ton floor jack. It's the only thing that can slide under this car besides 3-ton, but I don't have the money for a 3-ton right now. 3-ton... Floor jacks that can get the car even higher. Well, running about two hundred dollars where I live. So if you have one, it is highly recommended to use it. Now, the reason I went backwards, I just probably saw my wrench fly backwards. I accidentally tightened it all the way. Now, I'm going to go get my jack and put a load on the suspension. Then tighten them down the rest of the way. First, to make sure I get my socket in there enough. Now, remember, torque specs on these are 38 pounds.
Now, I'm going to jack this up on the uh, lower control arm in order to get the suspension up. Some people do it on the brakes, but I'm afraid I'm, I might damage the rotors if I do that. So, Although I do recommend a bottle jack on these because it's a pain. Now just get this up just enough so it's very lightly lifted off the jack stand. The reason, other reason you want to use jack stands is so this way the job's done properly, safely, and since there's now a load on the jack and not the jack stand, the jack stand's still in there, but if my jack fails, my stand will catch it. That's why I say very lightly lifted off the uh, jack stand. All right. That was the fun part, trying to torque this one down. Because this one has no catch. Uh, 17, where's the 18, 19, whatever. Stand by for technical difficulties. Ah, here it is. Now, as you heard that click, that one is now torqued down properly. Now to do the back. Thank you, back one, for being in a way that makes my life so much easier. Well, I'm able to use a part of my uh, chassis in order to... I'm going to need a new torque wrench soon. I'm using the suspension, chassis, and all that. To hold the wrench in place while I try to torque the other side down. This is gonna be fun. And there we go. Nicely torqued down. Alright. Let me grab something for my tool kit. Oh. Alright. Now that that's done, we're going to grease up the Zerk fittings and this side is done. However, while you're in here, since you got tire off, check other things like your brake pads, make sure there's no play. While there is play in my rotor, that gets fixed when I bolt the tire on. Check CB joints for tears in the boots, play. And as I told you, I'm going to have to replace the whole lower control arm. Still got a lot of good metal in it, but I don't want to go through the hassle of pushing and pushing out. So, uh... That's all there really is to this. Um, remember, uh, torque is 38 foot pounds on these bolts, and make sure suspension is jacked up. I'll see you all later. I am wore out. I'm not going to record the other side because the other side's the same way. Just unbolt, bolt on, torque down, re grease. See you all later.